the 1931 Yangtze River floods. One of China's most valuable economic, social, and cultural assets, the Yangtze River, is in trouble. It's been recognized as a key source of life in China and has played a pivotal part in the country's history. But did you know about the Yangtze River floods of 1931? One of the most devastating natural disasters of the 20th century. What really happened back then? And how did China recover from the loss? Hey everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell icon to get regular updates about our channel. In today's video, we'll discuss a devastating river flood in China that occurred in 1931 and claimed the lives of between 500,000 and 4 million people. This is unusually severe considering river floods today normally kill only a few people. The Chinese river flood was 100 to 400 times more lethal than the deadliest flood of the century. So what happened in 1931 to cause such devastation? Is it possible that it will happen again? Let's begin. Near rivers, many of the world's ancient civilizations were constructed. It makes sense. Rivers provide clean water for drinking, food, irrigation, and natural defense against invasion. However, you can see how living near a river would be an issue. Rivers overflow. China is a relic of a long ago civilization. Moreover, many of China's ancient cities are situated beside waterways. Throughout Chinese history, several rivers have flooded. No year, however, was as awful as 1931. In this particular year, three of China's largest rivers, the Yellow, Yangtze, and Wai, all got flooded. Approximately 1 to 4 million people were killed as a result of the floods and the troubles they caused. Even in China's ancient civilization, this was one of the most devastating natural disasters ever recorded. Floods are more common in hilly areas such as the Yangtze River Basin. During early spring and mid-winter thaws, the Yangtze floods of 1931 can be explained as the most basic level by a combination of heavy snow, melting, and an anticipated amount of rain. With a length of 3,915 miles, the Yangtze, also known as the Shangjiang River, is Asia's longest river and the world's third largest river. People in the West are most familiar with the name Yangtze, which comes from Yang's ancient lordship. Changjiang, which translates to Long River in Chinese, is the colloquial name for the Yangtze River. The Yangtze River flows south of hundreds of miles from its source on the Tibetan Plateau passing through rugged mountains and valleys before emerging on the Yunnan, Gizhou, the Yunjing Plateau. The Yangtze River travels largely eastward from the Yungui Plateau, eventually emptying into the East China Sea. For millennia, the Yangtze River Basin has been the epicenter of Chinese settlement. The Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates clashed 45 million years ago, creating the Himalayas and generating the Tibetan Qinghai Plateau. Water carved the basin of several of China's rivers, including the Yangtze, as it drained from the newly formed mountains. Its basin stretches more than 600 miles north to south and 2,000 miles west to east, making it excellent for settlement, agriculture, drinking water, and commerce. Why was 1931 such a devastating year for humans who've lived along the Yellow, Yangtze, and Wai rivers for millennia? There were various reasons for this, the first of which is the weather. China experienced a severe drought from 1928 to 1930. The lack of rain caused the rivers to recede and the soils to dry up. Then there were massive snowstorms in the winter of 1930, followed by exceptionally severe rains in the spring. These rains melted the remaining snow and flooded the rivers much more. Strong cyclones struck China, putting the final nail in the coffin. In a typical year, China experiences two cyclones. In July of 1931, China was hit by seven cyclones. The weather was clearly a factor. Those cyclones, however, were not the primary cause of the floods in 1931. China has developed more advanced farming technology in recent decades, resulting in significant growth in agriculture. Regrettably, China has also had rebellions, wars, and political unrest. The government programs in charge of monitoring and maintaining the river's health were unable to fulfill their responsibilities. As a result, property along the river has been overused. Dikes and dams supposed to control the river have been built wrongly, and the river's natural regulators, forests, and wetlands have been destroyed. As a result of the unusual weather in 1931, rivers overflowed their banks, dams burst, and water flooded throughout central China. The Yellow, Yangtze, and Wai rivers 
had all flooded so extensively by August 1931 that most of central China had been drowned. The immediate floods killed almost 100,000 individuals. But the surviving faced their own challenges. Crops were devastated, grain storage facilities were washed out, buildings were leveled, and roads were wrecked by the floods. Many rural population were left homeless and isolated, with no food and no way to receive relief. The Yangtze floods of 1931 swamped 180,000 square kilometers, an area roughly equal to a combined territory of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The flood zone spanned Guangdong in the south, Manchuria in the north, and Sichuan in the west. The Yellow River and the Grand Canal, as well as eight of China's 23 provinces were severely impacted. As much as a tenth of the Chinese population were relocated as a result of the floods. With their homes entirely submerged, the flooding was so severe that when fall arrived, the ground was still flooded, preventing farmers from planting crops for the following year. Airports as well as telegraphs and telephones were compelled to close, although not all railways were inundated. The large number of refugees who sought refuge along their tracks prevented relief from reaching Wuhan. To make matters worse, China's government had become so chaotic and weak as a result of recent battles that it was unable to gather the resources and personnel required to save the stranded towns. This is, in the end, why the death toll was so high. Millions of people died of starvation, disease ravaged weakened communities, and homeless refugees were stranded without a home. In certain situations, people were forced to turn to cannibalism, eating the dead in order to survive. Much of the devastation inflicted by the Yangtze River floods in 1931 could have been prevented if flood control procedures had been strictly adhered to. Because most of China's resources were being used to fund a civil war at the time of the floods, sediment built up along the river's bank and the Yangtze was inevitably overlooked. The Chinese government established the National Storm Relief Commission in reaction to the flood. Flood relief donations came in from all over the world, with countries in Southeast Asia being particularly generous. Flood rescue activities became much more difficult after Japan invaded Manchuria in northeastern China in the autumn of 1931. China was eventually able to get a huge loan of wheat, flour from the US, which helped to alleviate food shortages. Because flood mitigation along the Yangtze was particularly difficult due to the Chinese civil conflict and the war with Japan, the government was only able to build modest dams and leeways along the river. During the devastating floods of 1954 and 1998, they were unsuccessful. By the end of the 20th century, China had become more politically stable and work on the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze near Yishang, Hubei province had begun. When construction of the dam began in 1994, it was China's largest engineering project. When it was completed in 2006, the Three Gorges Dam was the world's largest dam structure. The dam not only prevents massive flood damage, but it also generates a significant amount of hydroelectricity power with the help of 32 turbine generators. The dam can create up to 22,500 megawatts of energy when combined with two additional generators, making it the world's most productive dam. The Three Gorges Dam's water levels are currently approaching maximum capacity, casting doubt on the dam's long-term implications. For the time being, however, the dam has shown to be efficient in preventing major flood damage to communities along the Yangtze River and towns such as Wuhan. The government hopes that time will allow the Yangtze to recover, replenish, and restore balance to its ecosystem while also increasing biodiversity. But time may not be on the side as climate change threatens to exasperate many of the river's problems through extreme weather events such as droughts, storms, and floods. It is therefore critical that the Yangtze recovers pollution is reduced, and the waterway is protected for future generations. That's all for today, and if you found this video informative, then don't forget to hit the like button and share our video with others. Share your thoughts on the video in the comments section below. We'd love to hear it, and we will see you in the next